So yep, Travis here, Debtors Dirt Bikes. So yeah, GPS's guys are, in my opinion, a must have, especially when you're running out in some uh, unmarked territory, exploring some single tracks that are made by um, you know, local guys and whatever. So a place where I live, I am so thankful. I am literally 30 minutes from ultimate single track, but it's not an OHV park in any way, shape or form. So you gotta know where you're going. That's where these really come in handy. So I get a lot of people asking, what am I running on the GPS? So right now I'm actually running the Garmin InReach. You can run the phone apps, um, like, um, what's it called? I had to check, um, Onyx. You can run the Onyx app. I've been using it. Um, it, it's cool, but if you're running some heavy single track guys, not recommended. It's not accurate enough. You can download the map and all that stuff, but it's it's not quite accurate as these because some of those trails, you're literally like two feet from it and sometimes it can be hard to tell. So I would definitely recommend a real GPS um, for unmarked, you know, non-OHV single track. It's definitely the way to go. And also Onyx can be a little scary because you know those secret trails that everyone holds tight like their freaking virginity? Um, you can unfortunately log it and then share it and then it spreads like mad and then, then the trails are ruined. Trails need to be ridden, you know? They don't need to be hidden, they do need to be ridden. But when the whole world knows about it, you're kinda screwed. But back to GPSs. Okay, so I started off with the Garmin E-Trek 10. This is a very, very good entry level and starter GPS, guys. Um, so just because it's cheap doesn't mean it's bad. It tracks me very well until I get into heavily, heavily wooded area if I really start going out from the boonies. But then I notice if I turn it off, turn it on, and have it relocate me on map. See, I got the little uh, question mark. So that means it's trying to find me right now. Usually I'll do that and it'll track me fine. It'll still work good enough to get me home, but this has been a really good GPS, guys. The thing I really like about it, it's very simple, straightforward to use. And when you turn it on and click on maps like I just did, the screen stays illuminated or stays on like this, you know, and then you can zoom in and out through here and you can see your range going up and down. So if I zoom way out, you know, you can kind of see where those other squiggle lines are. And you can nicely zoom up and see where I've been riding. So th this has been great. It will help you find your way back to the truck. You can set a waypoint or, you know, where you're at. And all those little squiggle lines. When I zoom in, that's much more accurate. So th this is zoomed way out. So... Very good GPS, it's cheap, it works good. Um, but what made me upgrade to this guy was the fact it has SOS on it. So which means you have satellite communication, so you can text the wifey that you're running late or you tried something too hard and got screwed up. Um, so yeah, you can let somebody know you're late by texting them or if you're really stuck, you're really hurt or something just goes wrong, you can get life help. So it's about $11, $12 a month through Garmin. That's why I got it. But it also has a stronger antenna than this guy. Uh, so this one doesn't lose me at all. This one will lose me a little bit if I'm in some heavy areas, which can be a little scary, but you can eventually find where you're going with this. The only thing I didn't really care for this, which it's to save battery, it's a function, is it shuts off or doesn't shut off but you know um it'll load the screen here and then while i'm riding it'll turn off so it's a little bit easier to miss a turn so i do have to if i'm you know not sure where i'm at i do have to click a button stop and look at where i'm at where this is kind of cool it's always on so i can actually see while i'm riding that is one cool thing that's probably a function I can maybe turn off, but I haven't been able to figure that out yet. If you guys have this GPS and do, then hey, let me know. Uh, so yeah, see, it just, it turns off. Um, this is the SE Plus. There is a better, better model of this with the geographical maps. I wish I would have bought that. 
these GPSs are expensive. So I was like, eh, you know what? An extra 50 bucks, screw it. I'll just get this. I just want to know where I'm going. But it's really nice to be able to see the surrounding mountain ranges, rivers, and creeks and whatnot, because if you're wanting to explore new territories, it's really nice to be able to see where this, you know, I, I can't, I can't really see anything. I think if I zoom way out, I can maybe find like Sacramento, but yeah, see, here's, here's some of my rides, but I'm transferring, I'm saving this cause I have a lot of good trails saved on this that I need to kind of transfer over to here. So I ride with two. That's why my videos, you see me riding with two. So that's the comparison guys of the E-Trek versus the InReach. Uh, the price is almost double for this, but you know what, having that life support ability and communications is, is worth a lot to me. So there's some cool comparisons and that's why I went with the InReach.